Hey what's up guys, Skia here, and in this video I'm going to show you guys an alternative to fraps for recording your gameplay, as well as a little bit of a tutorial as well, which I will get into. Um, the alternative to fraps that I've been using recently is called DxTory. Now, let me preface this by saying a lot of people um, find an alternative in Bandicam, and a lot of people use that because of the fact that it um, it does not break up video like Fraps does. Fraps, once it hits 4 gigabytes, or I think it's 3.95 gigabytes, it will cut the video and start a new file. And a lot of people dislike that for editing. It can become a challenge. It's very frustrating to have all these files. So a lot of people use Bandicam. Now, not many people know about this program right here called DxTory. And I found this program on TGN's community forum, um, TGN.tv. Somebody posted about it, and I said, you know, what the hell, why don't I give it a shot? And so far, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I love the customization. I love the performance. And I love the file size. It's about um, two, It's about a third or half of what Fraps gives me, which is great. Because I record in high quality. You know, I record in, in full-size Fraps here, and I'm using 1080p. So that's very that's very big. Um, and that's that's a very big file size. And I don't have... A huge hard drive. Um, I have two hard drives and I'm actually recording to the smaller one so that I can run my operating system and games on the bigger one which has um, which is a bit faster so uh, just so I can have you know a bit quicker operating system but anyways I digress back to this program and um, DxTory. So why use DxTory over Fraps? The question that I'm sure you're thinking and the reason is, is because it gives you better performance while in game, as well as um, a better compressed file size. So you're going to have a lot more file sp storage space on your hard drive. It's not going to use as much. Like I said, um, with the settings that I'm going to show you here, I get about a third of the file size of what I would in Fraps. Um, and I'll show you why. As well as, it's not as processor intensive as Fraps is. Fraps is very, very processor intensive. It's using about 40% of my CPU while recording in game, which is ridiculous. And I have a quad core. Um, I don't have the best quad core, as I'm on an, an Asus G74SX, which is a laptop, because I have to have a laptop for work, otherwise I would have a built computer, um, which I plan on doing later. But that's that's a different story entirely. So it uses a lot of my processor. I can handle it. It can, My computer can handle it fine, but I figure this other one, it gives me better for DX story gives me better performance. I may as well give that a shot. So let's get right into the tutorial aspect. Um, so why? So let's see. Okay. So I'm just going to go through all of the settings here as they're rather technical, and um, I'll give you the best settings that I found. I've been playing with this for a few days, um, for quite a while actually. Um, you know, I've dedicated a lot of time to getting these settings just how I like them and to give me the best performance while keeping the quality that I want for YouTube. And I upload to YouTube in 720p, not 1080p, as most people will not watch 1080p because of their download speed. Oftentimes their computer or, or download, download speed, um, internet connection, or combination cannot handle 1080p. And so I upload in 720p anyways. Um, it saves me hassle and it saves the user hassle or the viewer rather. Um, I know some people do upload in 1080p which is fine, go right ahead, but this is just what I do. Um, and Fraps cannot record in 1080p unless your resolution in game is set to, uh, I'm sorry, it cannot record in 720p unless your resolution in game is set to 720p, which is a pain because I don't want to play a game in 720p when I have a 1080p screen. Um, so with that in mind, I'm loving the configuration options for DX Story. And without further ado, let's just get right into the settings. Um, these, this is not settings. You do not need to worry about this. This will just show you the game information that you're playing, and it will give you a lot of in-depth information. If you don't understand it, that's fine. Um, it's just information. You do not have to mess with anything on this screen. This is the overlay settings, just like Fraps would have. An FPS counter, and it will tell you when you're recording and when you aren't recording. So these are user preference. Um, definitely have video FPS and write FPS and record status. Have all those checked because then you will know the video FPS you're getting, the FPS that is going to be within the recorded file, um, the recorded game file, and then record status, which means you know you'll know if you're recording or not, which is key. And then you can change the colors as you want, and uh, 
that that's up to you you know I just like green and red just because I can see it really well and uh, it's easy so these are folders so this will this will dictate where your recordings are going to be saved now I have my recording saved onto my extra hard drive and it's not as fast as the hard drive that I'm running my video game on but because it's a separate hard drive it's gonna still give me better performance and better write speeds and better FPS in um, within the recorded file than if I was to record on the same hard drive that I'm running the game and my operating system on um, because the game or the <clears throat> excuse me the hard drive that I'm running the game on and running the X story and my operating system and all that um, it has to work twice as hard to record write and then read at the same time so if you record to a separate hard drive you're gonna get a lot better performance so keep that in mind if you can't do that um, partition your hard drive which will help just a little bit now what you want to do here is just choose where you want to save it to click this button right there which is uh, the bench benchmark test run that and then click OK I've already done that I'm not going to do it again but once it completes that's fine click OK um, and then one thing to note is always have use default settings checked this way you will not have to change this again for a future game as you can see DX story profiles each video game um, and so if I go to WoW it has the same thing but because I have used default settings I do not have to redo any of these settings that I'm about to show you when I go from game to game so that's very important now these are hotkeys you can set these as you like there's nothing um, you know no do's or don'ts on this just do it however you want to um, and then the movie settings this is where it becomes key now what you want to do is you first want to again make sure this is checked and then you're gonna want to video codec so this is very important by default it will go to the DX story video codec now if you're gonna use this I will give you the optimal settings but first if you can use the Lagarith lossless codec which I will have a link to that in the description of this movie um, or of this video it's a free codec you will not have it by default but it is free and it's a very small download I highly advise you install it it will give you about a 15 FPS increase which is very very nice it will also give you a better compression and a smaller file size so definitely use this if you can now uh, first I will show you the configuration for this codec and then I will show you the configuration for the um, DX story video codec now for this one you're just gonna wanna click here you're gonna wanna choose YV12 it will give you the best performance it will not give you quite as true of colors as RBG but once uploaded to YouTube it is not gonna matter um, trust me on this you definitely wanna do this it will give you a much better performance also anybody who uploads video m most likely has a dual core <laughs> or a quad core processor or even a six core so you definitely want to use multi-threading if you have a single core processor do not check this but if you also have a single core processor you probably aren't going to be uploading to YouTube as you're not going to be able to handle video recording so check use multi-threading now leave everything else unchecked feel free to read what they do but these are the optimal settings that I've found so click OK now all of these settings here you do not have to worry about oh I'm sorry let me show you the DX story video settings first if you're gonna use the DX story video codec click this choose you choose choose YUV 24 again this is gonna give you the true quality but this will give you more or less the same with a smaller file size and better performance these two will give you you know these are not gonna be um, quality these are not gonna be enough quality do not check these you do want compress so there you go. That's what you're going to use for the uh, DX story video codec. Again, use this if you can. Now, down here, this is up to you. These are user preference settings. I have nothing checked here because I want my full screen. I want everything to be recorded. Now, what's key? These settings are very key. So, YouTube will not um, show your video at a higher FPS than 30 anyways. It will downscale it for you, which you can do in your video program but you might as well just cut right to the chase and cut that step out and just record at 30 FPS this will give you better performance better write speed and smaller file size so it's a win-win for everybody if you just choose 30 FPS keep in mind that you will not play at 30 FPS you will just be writing the recording at 30 FPS 
you need to choose output and you need to choose file output, not direct show output. Direct show output is to output into some program like XSplit for live streaming or something similar, which I will show you in a tutorial on that as well. It's a very good way to um, maximize performance while streaming to use a combination of DXStory and XSplit. I'll show you that in another video. Choose File Output AVI. <coughs> Excuse me. If you need to save on performance and file size just a bit more, you can choose Raw Cap, although that will not by default be playable. So if you choose Raw Cap, you're going to have to click here. Raw Cap Convert, well, Conv means converter. Click that, and then it will show you your Raw Cap files. And then you're going to have to, um, let's see, build all files or build selected, which will convert them into AVI and then you'll be able to play. The downside to this is that it will use twice the files, um, twice the file size because you're gonna have to have both the raw cap and the AVI at your computer at the same time. Once you convert it, you can delete the raw cap and not worry about it. However, just keep that in mind. I used AVI as I get good performance with it, um, although this is better, but I would like to cut out that step of having to convert it, so I just use AVI. Now, include your mouse cursor so that you're in a game just like World of Warcraft. It will show your mouse. This is important. And synchronize video FPS should be off. If you click this, it will synchronize your game's FPS with your frame rate up here. Now, you don't want that as you're going to be recording at 30 if you follow my settings. And that will just not be as fun to play with. So when I leave this unchecked, I'm playing around 60 FPS um, while questing. and, and the reason it's 60 is because of the view distance is very large, so it, it cuts it down a lot. I can play at around 90 if I'm in a room within World of Warcraft or if I'm in a battleground or something like that. So, Anyways, scaling. Now this is important. As you know, with fraps, you can choose full size or half size. Full size will be the full resolution that you're playing your game at, and half size will cut that resolution in half. There's no middle ground. It's full size or half size. Now. With DX Story, you can choose your FPS. You can go by percentage, 100, 75, 50, or choose it manually. I like to do this. I like to go by size and choose my my um, resolution manually, as I can record in 720p because I will not be uploading to YouTube in 1080p because it's a waste of my bandwidth and a waste of the user's bandwidth generally because they're not going to watch it in 1080p. A lot of people can't. Um, some people will, which is cool. And if, you know, um, at some point I may think about uploading in 1080p, but for now I'm going to stick to 720 as I feel that it's good enough and so do many other YouTubers, um, especially performance-wise. It definitely boosts your performance if you record in 10, uh, excuse me, 720 as opposed to 1080. So these are the re this is the resolution here for 720p, 1280 by 720. Now, if you do this, again, it will be a performance increase and an incredible file size decrease. You will get a lot more bang for your buck, buck with 720p because you do not have to downscale it in whatever video program you use, which is just another step you can cut out. So with that in mind, these are the settings for movies that you're going to keep if you follow what I'm doing. You can change these to your liking, but this is what I found works best for me. Um, and so go ahead and you can copy these if you'd like. Um, I highly recommend that you do. Now we're going to go over to audio here. What you need to do is you need to have two audio settings. And these are the plus and minus to um, add or delete. So on the first one here, I have record sound so that it does record the sound. Speakers meaning my in-game audio or whatever is coming from my computer. PCM is by default and just the best for now. Um, PCM, and then I do 44100 hertz, um, 44,100 hertz, 16 bit. The reason I do not do higher is because, again, performance. This is good enough, and it will give you the best performance and the best quality ratio. Now, on my second tab, I have microphone, and then the same PCM, 44,100 hertz, 16 bit stereo. You do not want mono. Now. You can undo this so that you do not record through your microphone. Um, but I check this when I do live, you know, if I do like a live commentary or something of that nature, then 
this is nice as long as you, you have it set up. So all you have to do is record or not record um, or, or whatever you like, you know. If you have it set up, it's just one more step you do not have to do later on. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyways, and then you're going to go to screenshot settings. The only thing I want to tell you to do here is change it to PNG. By default, I believe it is BMP or JPEG. JPEG will degrade over time, and PNG is just the best for web usage as well as video. So just have it at PNG and, again, saves a, ha saves a step. Um, the rest are up to you. You can change this if you want to. This is just what I recommend. Um, and now we're going to go to advanced. These are the other important settings. Again, use default settings. Then you will not have to change this for another video game, which is very frustrating. I've had to do that a couple times because by default, this is not checked. So go ahead and check that. And then leave all of these unchecked except for, for CPU processing if, only check this, if your CPU is better than your GPU. Because this will take some of the load off of your GPU and force the processor to process the video, some of the video, um, instead of the GPU. It will just take pressure off of your GPU if you need it to. You definitely need to change this, processing threads right here. If you have a dual core, set it to 2. If you have a quad core, set it to 4. You could hypothetically set it to 8 if your quad core has hyper-threading. Mine does, but for safety's sake, I'm just setting mine to 4 and leaving it at that. Now make sure limit video FPS is unchecked so that your video does not get limited to 60 FPS. That's all I need to show you on the advanced tab. If yours looks like this, you're good to go. Again, unless you have a quad, if you have a dual core, use two. Um, single core, use one. And so on and so forth. Now, you want to go over to global settings. This is up to you. Again, does not matter. Choose whatever you like here. So, these are the optimal settings. I'll go back to this page. It's the most important. These are the optimal settings for using DX Story, in my opinion. Now, if you find something better, please let me know. Um, I've just done a lot of tinkering, and this is what I've found to be the best performance to quality ratio. But again, if you find something better, let me know. I'm very interested in hearing. So um, feel free to use these settings. You know, I think it'll be very good, um, do a lot of good for you, especially in file size and performance. DX Story will run a lot better on a lower quality computer than Fraps will. Um, keep that in mind because, again, you can set it to 720p directly and not go for half size or full size. You can manually set your FP or your um, resolution rather, um, which is a very nice feature to have. That's my favorite feature so far. So far, I like DX Story a lot better than Fraps, um, but maybe that will change. I don't know. So far, like I said, I really like DX Story, so that's what I'm going to stick with and do my videos with as I go. Um, if I need to switch back and forth, I will. But Again, some people argue that Fraps has a better quality than DX Story. Once uploaded to YouTube, I do not believe it will matter. I really don't. I think the performance increase and size file decrease that you will get with DX Story outweighs the slight quality increase that you will get with Fraps. That's just a personal preference. It's up to you guys. Go ahead and use it, but that's just what I'm going to use. Um, it's just my preferred so far. Um, anyways, I hope this has been helpful for you. I sh hope that I've shown you something new and um, all that yada yada. <laughs> so, you know, if this has helped you guys, please like, um, like this video, subscribe, comment with any questions. I will answer them. That's key. I will answer all of your comments. Even if you just say hi, I will reply back and say hi. Um, again, I'm a technical guy. I work with computers for a living, so if you have any questions, let me know, and I will help you out. I will take the time, and I'd be more than happy to help you. So, again, I hope this tutorial has kind of helped you guys out. Um, give it a shot. There's a trial version of DX Story, and that lossless codec is free. So go ahead and give them a shot. See what you think. See if it's worth the money, and um, you can decide for yourself. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hope you liked the video, and until next time.